All right, y'all. I'm about to show y'all how to go out, pre-spawn, find these fish fast. Y'all stay tuned for that. Welcome to Walking on Water. I'm Anthony. My channel is about fishing, fellowship, and faith. See, God created this world for us and gave us all the senses we need to dwell here. I'm just trying to show you another way, the way he intended. If this interests you, then I'll tell you like Christ told Simon Peter, follow me and I'll make you a fisherman of men. Facts. So are you coming? <laughs> Method works. Always stay close to the promises of God. Welcome back to another episode of Walking on Water. I got a few hours a day just trying to figure things out. I'm going to show y'all how I go out and I find them. So, first things first. Let me say I appreciate all my new subscribers as well as my day oneers. I appreciate the support. And I'm filming with a new camera that you all bought. <laughs> I appreciate it. This episode is going to be a little bit more different because I'm planning on putting on this GoPro. Well, it's not really a GoPro. It's a DJI Action 3. And so, I'm going to put it on. And I'll be talking with y'all while I fish. Because I don't want to sit down and miss out on catching my fish. Got to get me a cooler. <laughs> y'all know what I'm saying. All right, y'all. First things first. One of the number one things about catching more fish <clears throat> for 2023 is going to be knowing how to properly set your drag. Now, I haven't heard nobody talk about it, but I think it's very important. And so, I'm going to show you three rods. So, I got an eagle claw right here good fiberglass this is one of my favorite type of rods a lot of people ask me about it it's simply because it has a parabolic bend a parabolic bend just means it's got a, a c bend i don't know if y'all can see that a c bend to it now what i do is understanding where your backbone in any rod that you use your first two to three eyes is your sensitivity all right and what happens is that's that's how you feel your fish. Now, if you go down to about this section here on most rods, the backbone is right here. And so you wanna set your drag according to the backbone. And so what I do is I'll take my jig and I'll hook it to my boat or I'll tie the line to something and I'll keep it drawn tight and loosen my drag. Now loosen the drag until, I want y'all to see that. Now, you see where it's bending at? Right now, I don't know if y'all can hear that drag, but right now it's, it's too loose. Now I keep tightening it until I only hear one click at a time. Cause that's, this is my bending part. This is my hook set. That's my backbone. And so right now I'm getting one click at a time. I know it's set perfect. So that's how I do that. Now some, because I want to show y'all an example of another rod. We have a guitar. This is a medium light, extra fast tip. Extra fast tip means, look look at that bend of that tip. You see that? So that's all the sensitivity right there. But the backbone starts after, the, after your sensitivity. So your backbone will be here. This is your hook setting power. So I need to set my drag so I hear one click at a time in this area right here. So I'm gonna do the same thing with it. I'm gonna hook it here. I'm gonna wind it tight so I can see it, and I'm gonna loosen my drag. That's, my drag is loose, so, so you can hear it's multiple drags when I, when I pull on it. So I'm gonna tighten it down until I only get one, one click when I jerk it. That's one click right there. I don't know if y'all can hear it, but that's one click. So I know I got it set perfect. So 
I'm gonna show y'all that one. Now I got one more rod I wanna show y'all. A lot of people have been asking me about these rods. So I'm gonna bring that one up. That mean green. Everybody know what this is. That ACC crappy stick. This is the one piece uh, six by uh, six point six. Uh, Mr. Andy Lehman of uh, ACC Crappy Stick, he gave me two of them, up, a 6.6 .6 and a 7.6. Really good rods, a lot of backbone power. Now, that's what ACC is known for. They're known for backbone. And because of that, what I want to do is, now, it's got a parabolic bend. It bends almost down the rod as well, but the backbone is still in this area of the rod. And because it has a lot of backbone, I want to I want to make sure that I got that drag set really well. So I'm gonna tighten that down, loosen my drag. Y'all can hear that. And I'm gonna tighten it down so I'm only feeling one click at a time. There it is, one click at a time. So that drag is set perfect. Now, the reason I'm telling y'all how important this drag is because people say that Crappy has a paper mouth. And so, this is true. Now, when I think about it, it, busts, it pokes a hole in the theory that, well, most fishermen has been taught that we have to, when we set the hook on the fish, we have to apply pressure the whole time, otherwise that fish is gonna get off. But that's a lie. Now I say that because as a fisherman, have you ever gotten a, a, a hook in your finger or hook your hand? The first thing you're gonna look at is whether or not that hook has passed the barb. If it passed the barb, then you know you're in trouble because it's not gonna back up. You're gonna have to cut it with some pliers or go to the hospital and have them cut it out. Now, if you get a hook stuck in your hand, there ain't no amount of slack or pressure uh, that's gonna allow that hook to fall out of your hand. And so I apply that to the fish as well. When you set the hook on the fish, you wanna have just enough pressure to, to let that barb penetrate his mouth. Once that barb is in his mouth, that's it, you got him. Now, if your drag is set too tight, when you set the hook, you're gonna rip a, a bigger hole in his mouth. And then that slack, that if you get any slack in your line, it'll just fall out his mouth. So that fish's job is to, while he's fighting you, his job is to rip a hole in his mouth so he can get away. And so if your drag is set properly, no matter what, you should be able to land that fish. And so that's the first main thing I want you to know about when it comes to catching more crappy in 2023 and so on. And so hopefully I explained that good to you. Let's get back to the video. All right, so first things first. The most important thing for finding fish in the spawn or before the spawn is water temperature. I don't care how you look at it. Everybody say, hey, the dogwood trees are blooming, so they, I know they got to be spawning. That ain't absolutely the truth. Bottom line is this. The spring is all about water temperature. And so we want to look for anything above 60 to know that these fish are gonna start staging. Now what happens is the males, they'll start fanning their beds around 60 to 63 degrees. Here's the reason why. I want you to think about this. If a chicken was to lay an egg and walk away from that egg, that egg would never hatch. But if that chicken was to sit on that egg, eventually that egg will hatch. Now, why is that? It's because the egg needs the body heat from that chicken in order for it to hatch or develop now same thing applies now when you think about the hatcheries and all these uh, the biologists and the hatcheries to artificially hatch eggs the water temperature has to be between 65 and 75 degrees now if the biologists and the scientists know this that the water temperature has to be above 65 degrees don't you think the fish know that too now that we know in order to hatch eggs at 65 degrees, then that's our goal. The most important thing is water temperature. So I'm on the south side of the lake. And right now, I'm gonna let y'all see this. Right now, the water temperature is 63.2, okay? And so 
if it's 63.2, that means I, me being that I'm on the south side, it's going to be a whole that's colder than the north side. Now, water runs downhill, so you go to the north to find your shallow water, and it should be warmer, and that's where we'll start. So when we get to the north side of the lake, we'll see what the water temperature is there, and based off of the water temperature, it'll let me know where I need to be looking. So, hey, let's go get them. All right, now that I'm on the south side, uh -huh. now that I'm on the north side, we got the water temperature. Now check this out. The water temperature right now is 66.5. So, now it's above 65. Now they can really start spawning. Now the males is gonna be on the banks, along rocks and stumps and, you know, areas like that. Now I'm not, looking for I'm not looking for males we want females and so instead of me being on the bank next to the rocks and the stumps and stuff I'm gonna be out in the middle looking for females that are still traveling suspended now a key thing is this anytime I'm in 12 foot of water or less I like to use my side imaging to find my fish because if I drive over fish and it's shallower than 12 feet Typically, you're gonna spook them, and they're gonna run off anyway. So you you'll never pick up anything with your 2D and your down your down imaging. And so I use side imaging. And right now I'm in about 11 foot of water. I'm gonna let y'all see that. Right in about 11 foot of water. And so I'm just looking. And here's the stuff that I'm wanting to see. You see those dots there? That's that's crappy or at least that's fish. So I'm already knowing I can stop here. You see that there? And so this is gonna be a great place to look. And so that's what I'm gonna do. I want y'all to excuse my screen. It's kinda, kinda dirty. <laughs> a lot of folks were asking about my setup. Now I have my transducer. This is the LVS 32. Correction, that's the LVS 34. I got it on a one inch PVC pipe with a little T bar and that's my handle. And that's, that's generally what I do. I, I take it, that T hooks onto the end of my boat and that's how I put it in the water and look around. This setup right here, this is just two flanges, toilet flanges that I got from Lowe's and a four inch pipe. That's what's holding my screen. That's what I use, it cost me probably about 65 bucks total for both. And uh, that's what I'm using. This is just just a quick note. I kind of like to scan along. You see, I just came across the creek channel. I like I still like following the creek channel as a, even when I get in this ten in this shallow water because the creek channel is the deepest area 
but then if you, as you can see it's 10 foot 11 foot 18 foot up here in the creek channel but it's five foot along the bank so i'm just gonna follow that along and then i'm gonna turn around and we're gonna face into the wind and start scouting out some fish let me see if y'all can see this this is what i'm looking for some suspended fish that fish is suspended about seven feet and so I'm just gonna cast in this direction. It's 30 feet out there and uh, see if we can catch them. Guys, attention, he coming. Got him. This will be the first fish of the day. Y'all get to see it. Put the basket out. Took it down. I spotted my next fish. It's eight feet deep, 35 feet out. We gonna cast on them. Cruising up on a fish. <clears throat> he sees it, he's coming. Let's see if he hit it. He hit it. He come off. We got another one in our sights. About 20 foot out there, seven foot deep. He sees it, he's coming. Got him. There you go. Took it down deep, y'all see it. See what I spotted, got two, two sitting out there in about four foot of water. So I'm just gonna cast over in the direction. Try it again. Something. Oh, I got him. I got him. All right. Y'all see it? Got him. Two feet out. <clears throat> See if we can get his attention. He sees it, he's coming. Got him. Got him.
He sees it. Got him. Got him. Y'all see it. Yeah, I got a bass on. I'll let y'all see him in a second. Y'all see him. Come here, Mr. Bass. I don't want you. You took it down deep. I'll see him. I'm out of here. That's a male crappy. Just caught him off the rocks. See if we can catch another one. I was looking for females. They ain't suspended. Like I hope. So, figure I'll catch some males. Pretty much just throwing against the rocks, letting it sink about a second and winding it slow. After I get about six foot from the bank, I wind it in and recast. Got him. Of the male. Pretty fish. Pretty fish. Y'all see it. Let's try that again. Got him. Been tanned up my jig pretty well, so let's try it again. One Mississippi. Now the star one. Oh, got him. You fighting? Come on up here. We took it down deep. Y'all see him? Another pretty fish. That basket looking good. I then came and did what I had to do. Pulled the rest of these crappies up. Y'all see them in there? Check out the cooler. The cooler full up too. <laughs> we see if it'll fit. I just want to test this out. I want to show y'all. Look at that slab. Nice female. So we got females and males. 
running out of room here. We're still gonna put them in there. Look at that. Nice female. Another big female. Oh, they falling out. They falling out. It's too full. Let y'all see it. It's filled to the top. Got a big fish fry we gonna do, so hey, gotta get it done. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, y'all, so I don't know how this camera, I don't know how this video is gonna turn out. I'm testing the camera, like I said. Um, caught a bunch of fish today, so happy about that. Um, things, key points to touch on. Let me let these cars go by. Key thing to touch on, when temperatures get to 64 degrees, 65, that's when you really need to look on these banks and check stumps and the rocks and all of that. Cause that's, that's all I was doing today. Uh, went out in the middle to find some suspended females and then got tired of hunting for them. So I decided to hit the banks. And once I hit the banks, I started stacking up on those males. And so I appreciate all y'all for watching. Like I said, it was just a test of this camera. Y'all let me know what you think of the camera and uh, how you like this format. That's about it. Hey. Y'all be blessed.